Hey Danish tubers, welcome back to Danish Tube and this video called Daily Necessary Danish Vocabulary for new students. That was a mouthful. Let's do it. Danish Tube. Okay, so it is what it is. Let's go through some nice Danish vocabulary for new students. If you're new in Denmark, new to learn Danish, you need these words. Hi. Hi means hi or hello. I often say like, yeah, Danish is so hard. This is how you say hello. Hi. You can also say hi, sir. Hi, sir. A little bit more slangy, a little bit more chill, like higher in English. Then all you have to do to say bye-bye is say it twice. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. We also have the word fa Vil. Farewell. Bye bye. You might think of the word farewell. And likewise, you can say see you. See you later. Vi ses. Vi ses. The interesting thing about vi ses is that you probably won't say it unless you actually are going to say or see the person later. So, you know like a friend, family member, colleague, someone you kind of know. Whereas in the supermarket, I probably won't say V6 to the assistant. Unless I always go in there and I see them all the time. Then we have V snaggers will. V snaggers will. Which, like, which means chat later. So usually when you're chatting to someone online on your phone or whatever. Yeah, speak later. V snaggers will. He de got. He de got. Have it good, literally. It means take care. So, again, a sign off when you're saying bye to somebody. Yeah, we say he de got. They might respond to you saying, I li mo. I li mo. You too. Okay, so a few more greetings we have. Go mo one. Come on. Technically here, the D is a soft D, so you could say go on. But people don't really speak like that. They say go on. Good morning. Go day. Go day. Good day. Go often. Go often. Good evening. And finally, go net. Go net. Good night. So, good morning, you'd say probably up until around 11, I guess, <laughs> right? It's probably universal, this. And then, good day from then on out until, I don't know, maybe 6 in the evening, afternoon. Then you start to say, go afton and go night when you're going to bed. Nice. Next slide. The next one is one of my favorites. It's a super chill way to say, hey, what's going on? What's up? Va sa. Va sa. This is the way that you will start to greet your Danish friends that you are gonna get when you move or live in Denmark. Don't worry, you will find Danish people that will like you. Don't listen to the rumors. Next one. How's it going? Va den go de. Va den go de. It's going good. De. Go got. De go got. For now, I'm only going to give you the positive. It's going well. It's going good. We don't want to be too negative here on Danish tube. We want to keep it positive. Then we have how are you? What then ha do de? What then ha do de? Literally, how have you it? And your response to this would be, of course, I'm good. I'm well. Ja ha. Did got. You had it got. Similarly to V6, this is kind of one that you wouldn't just maybe ask to somebody that you've just met. You know, in US, for example, sometimes people use, you know, how are you? A sort of a greeting. Not so normal to do that in Denmark. So it's almost like a more heartfelt question. Hey, my friend, but then how do they? Or just someone you know. It doesn't have to be so deep and meaningful. Another way of asking how it's going is just literally, is it going well? 
is it going good? Instead of uh, how's it going, go de got. Go de got? Yeah, de go got. Yeah, it's going well. Then we have, of course, the most, probably one of the most, or few of the most important words you're going to need is, firstly, yeah, meaning yes or yeah, yeah. And it, you can hear that it's just like the English, yeah, when you say yeah, it's not ya yeah or anything else like that, just think of the English, yeah, it's really easy. Then you have yips, yips, which in English you might say yip. Sort of also a little bit more slangy way to say yep, or to say yeah, rather. I guess you'll pick up over time the nuance of when yeps is kind of used because it can be a little bit ironic or it can be a little bit sarcastic or it can just be like, yeah, let's get on with it sort of thing. Yips, yips, let's go out here. So just listen out for the context of when it's used. Next one is... The word for no, nigh, nigh. One thing to notice is how it is spelled in regards to when you say hi and nigh, they rhyme. So when you have an E and a J, you have this sound of I, the English I, nigh, hi, sigh, and so on. Then we have nay, <laughs> one of my favorite words, nay, just meaning nope. So somebody might ask you like, you know, uh, did you take out the trash? Nay. <laughs> I like to use it in that kind of funny way where I'm like, no, I didn't do that. Sorry. Not sorry. Thanks is tack. Tack. Simple, right? Tack. Then there are all kinds of variations on tack. For example, mang tack. Mang tack. Thanks a lot. Literally. Many thanks. Mang tag. Next slide. Tulsen tag. One of the most fun words to say is Tulsen. I don't know why, just the way you move your lips. It's a really nice word. And it's like saying, thanks a million. It's, it might sound a little bit exaggerated, like, you know, wow, thanks a million. But it's not really. It's really just common to say Tulsen tag for any small thing that somebody does. Uh, Maybe they do something meaningful. Maybe they bring a gift for you. They did something for you you didn't expect. You might say, ah, oh, tools and tag. To which they might reply, sell tag. Sell tag. Don't mention it. Yourself, thanks. Sell tag. Or, this is a really nice one. It was nothing. Or, it was so little. De var so lit. De var so lit. And lastly, of course, they might also say, you're welcome, willkommen, willkommen, willkommen. Okay, a few more really nice words we have is for sure and certainly, something you probably start saying a lot. Hielt Sigurd. Hielt Sigurd. I don't know. De Vil jai ege. De vil ja ege. De vil ege. Or if you do know, just replace ege with got. De vil ja got. De vil ja got. You may also reword it with jai at the start with a more sort of English construction of jai vil de got. Jai vil de ege. Both are correct. You might start to notice one or the other being used in different scenarios, but yeah, don't worry about that. Do you know? Will do. And then the thing you want to ask about, so, could be like, do you know what time it is? Will do well clock air. Will do well clock air. Do you know what you're doing? Will do well do late Will do well do late wa. Will do well do late wa. Nej, det gør jeg ikke. Jeg har ingen idé. I have no idea. Jeg har ingen idé. Jeg har ingen idé. Then we have, I am sure, I am not sure. The word sikker. Jeg er sikker. Jeg er ikke sikker. Jeg er sikker. Jeg er ikke sikker. Probably you're going to want to ask somebody, Are you sure? Er du 
sikker? Er du sikker? And they might respond saying, yeah, I'm sure of it. I'm sure about that, something like that. Jeg er sikker på det. Jeg er sikker på det. Nice. Next slide. It's certain. It's for sure. Det er sikkert. Det er sikkert. And if it's not certain, it's not sure, you simply say, usikkert. Det er usikkert. And you will notice, as you get more and more into Danish, there are many words that have this negation with u, similarly to English, with certain, uncertain, sikkert, usikkert. Is it true? Is that right? One of the most common things you will hear, er det rigtigt? Er det rigtigt? Det er rigtigt. It's true. It's right. Det er rigtigt. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair knock. Fair knock. And the word knock, meaning enough, uh, can mean enough in different contexts, like, you know, have you eaten enough? Har du spist? Knock. Uh, it can also mean probably, which is something completely different, but whatever. Don't worry about that. Not at all. Slet ikke. Slet ikke. Or slet ikke. You know, you just want to say it. Not at all. Slet ikke. Okay, now we're getting to some things about language, which are going to be some of the most useful uh, sentences for you to have in your Danish toolbox. When you don't understand, ugh, I don't understand. Ja, forstår ikke. Jeg forstår ikke. Notice ikke and ik, it's the same. You can say both. Jeg forstår ikke. I understand a lot. Jeg forstår mal. Jeg forstår mal. The word mal is a particular word where, yeah, that's just how you say it. You can pronounce it majet if it's easier, but never with a G like make it or make it or anything like that. Mal is the best way to say it. Do you understand what I mean? Forstår du hvad jeg mener? Forstår du hvad jeg mener? Nej. Hvad mener du? Nej. Hvad mener du? No. What do you mean? So you can see here the word mean means like mean, but only when you're asking somebody what do you mean or you know uh, hvad mener du? Uh, do you understand what I mean? And things like that. As in like, not the meaning of a word, but the meaning of what a person is saying. Whereas, if you were talking about the meanings behind words and things like that, you would need this word, which is betsuda. Hvad betsuda det? Hvad betsuda det? What does that mean? So that could be a word more specifically, or it could be, you know, somebody said something, and you don't know what the resulting, you know, what that means for you. So, vabatutlade. And specifically with language, you know, what does this mean? Vabatutla, and insert the word that you want to know the meaning of. So, if I just take one from the list here, skrive, a bit further down. Vabatutla skrive, vabatutla skrive would be, what does skrive mean? On the flip side, you can ask about, for example, an English word in Danish and ask, you know, what is this called in Danish? Hva uh, Hitler? Insert the word. På dansk. Hva Hitler? Insert word. På dansk. Hva Hitler? På dansk. What is this in Danish? And that can be a specific word, or it could also be just uh, something you're holding in your hand, like... Hvad hedder den her på dansk? En mus. Hvad hedder den her på dansk? Or denne. Hvad hedder denne på dansk? What is this called in English? Cool. Then we have... How do you say? Into a word. In Danish. Hvordan siger man på dansk? Hvordan siger man a mouse på dansk? Hvordan siger man... A microphone, potensk, in moves, in microphone, easy words. Next one is about pronunciation. 
you're going to need this one, probably, because there's a lot of words that are a bit weird to pronounce. How do you pronounce this word? What then? Udtaler man dette or? What then? Udtaler man dette or? Of course, you're probably going to have a bit of paper or a book or your street sign or something. Um, so I'm saying dette or. So that's like a, almost like I have something in my hand. Whereas if I said de or, that is, I lose the the last t and the e. But then udtaler man de or. That's how I would say like that word. Cool. Few left. How do you spell it? What then stay what man de? What then stay what man de? Then of course you're going to need your Danish alphabet, which I think I have a video on, and if I don't, I'm probably going to do it. You might instead want to opt for asking the person to write it down for you. It's usually what I do in Spanish or something, or like someone asks me to spell something, I'm like, I'll just write it down for you because I'm not so confident with the alphabet just yet. But hopefully you will be, and I will be. So anyway, can you write it down for me? Ka du skrive det ned for mig? Can you skrive det ned for mig? One thing to point out is that I'm trying to read these sentences as I would say them in naturally spoken Danish. So when you hear me saying things like ma for the word me, it is also pronounced my. My. Ma. Can du skrive det ned for mig? Can du skrive det ned for mig? And again, that's just a thing of like listening out, listening out for when people say my or when people say ma, because there's maybe some instances where you wouldn't say ma and you would say my. But for now, we're just learning very, very specific sentences, so you can say them exactly as I am saying. The last one here is. Can you repeat that? Ka du gente? You could add the word de. We're leaving it off here. Ka du gente? Can du gente? Interesting thing here with the word gen means again, again. So there are many words that um, translate to re something in English. Gente, gen pour, reuse, uh, gen in lace, reload, and so on and so on. Final slide and a little bit more about speaking using the language. Really useful sentences when you're a new learner. For example, do you speak English? Taylor do Engelsk. Taylor do Engelsk. Hopefully, you're gonna get out of the need to ask this question. But when you first start, it's like a comfort, right, to be able to ask if someone speaks English because if you get a little bit like, ah, you can ask Taylor do Engelsk and. Most people do. So, I only speak a bit of Danish. Ja, te la kun lit dansk. Ja, te la kun lit dansk. Okay, you could also say I am learning Danish. Ja, ja, i gang me og lære dansk. Ja, i gang me og lære dansk. I love this expression. Ja, i gang me, because it's literally I am in the process of doing. So that can be literally right now in the now. Like, what are you in the process of doing? Hey, what are you up to? Ah, ja, i gang med at rulle up. I'm cleaning up. You could, of course, just say I'm cleaning up, but it's just a, a common expression way to say that you are in the process of doing it. You can also ask politely, "Would you mind speaking slowly?" Gider du at tale langsomt, just like I'm doing now. Gider du at tale langsomt? And gilla is also a really common word and a really great way to be polite. As you may or may not know, there's no way to say please exactly. So people actually use please in the Danish language. But this is a, a universal way to ask, would you mind? Hopefully, they're going to respond to you, of course. Se fully. Se fully. A lot of letters got lost in that. It's not se fully, but of course, se fully. Two left, no problem. Intet problem, intet problem, and absolutely, absolute, absolute. Nice. That brings us to the end of this first video called "Daily Necessary Danish Vocabulary for New Students." Hope you found it useful. Give me a like, leave a comment, let me know. Or we see you in the next video. Danish students.